Straw Hut Media. Don't be alone with Jay Kogan. Hello and welcome to Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan. I'm the guy you don't want to be alone with, Jake Hogan, and I am a uh, writer, director, actor, sometimes comedian, philosopher, and uh, apparently a pod podcast host, uh, which I've been told is a great career to go into in the uh, in the late 2023s. It's a very rare kind of unique thing that nobody else does, so I'm very excited. Um, anyway, today our guest, uh, our guest, my guest, will be Wayne Fetterman. Wayne Federman, very funny uh, comedian, author, amazing guy. And the thing we're going to talk about, uh, because my show is about talking about things that are on my mind with smart and funny people, and he's a smart and funny person. Uh, the thing we're going to be talking about is comedy and how, to st how can you stay relevant as you grow older? I find that, that comedy changes over time. And one of the things when I was a kid was I would see an older comic and go, oh, they're not funny. I don't get it. Or they don't get what, what hip is and what fun is. And of course, what hip is and what fun is changes over time. And my one of my biggest fears is I'm going to lose sight of it or I already have lost sight of what's funny and what's good. And so how do you stay on top of things? Uh, it's such a deep part of my my identity, that I know what's funny and I can be funny. And if I lose that, then uh, I don't know, I've lost everything. So it's very scary. It really is a deep and heavy topic because if it's so core to, if you if you think you're losing that thing that's so core to who you are, how do you, how do you adjust? Um, so I'm hoping that I don't have to lose that core because I, I grew up uh, in a comedy household. My father's a comedy writer. I went into comedy and it's obviously very meaningful to me. So uh, I hope Wayne has some good answers for me. We'll talk about that and many other things on Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan. Also want to send that email to you, D-B-A-W-J-A-Y-K-O-G-E-N at gmail.com. That's D-B-A-W-J-A-Y-K-O-G-E-N at gmail.com when you want to write in questions, comments, suggestions. I want to hear from you. Uh, anyway, we'll be right back with Wayne Fetterman. Don't be alone with Jay Kogan. I'm here with my friend Wayne Fetterman. Hi, Wayne. Thanks for Hello. being here. Thank you. Thanks for having uh, me. Just Wayne is a uh, is a fabulous stand up comedian. Right. He's a fabulous writer. He's uh, written uh, uh, this great new book, The History of Stand Up, from Mark Twain to Dave Chappelle. Yep. The whole. I was, yeah. I was unaware that they performed together. Well, they both love using the N word, okay. so they're very much. Well, there you go. <laughs> does Mark we're Twain, off. We're off. Does Mark Twain hit his thigh with the microphone every time <laughs> he laughs, has yeah. Yeah, for the to cue the laughs? There is, uh, they, you know, they do. Right. They both tour. They uh, both tour. Uh, Wayne is also one of the uh, producers of this uh, great George Carlin documentary called George Carlin's American Dream. Yes, which uh, I loved and watched every. I, I was I met George Carlin. It was uh, amazing to meet him and. The, the era that I met him in was featured in your documentary as one of the worst eras of his life. The 80s. The 80s where he did the George Carlin show. Yeah. He was yeah. very unhappy. Yeah, he was not happy doing right. that. That's when I met him. <laughs> How did he seem? He seemed happy. He did. He okay, didn't seem miserable. He seemed happy. Uh, and of course, you're uh, a recurring role on, on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Well, I've done two episodes. Okay, as that's the minimum to be categorized recurring. as recurring. Right? You, what's your character's name? Dean Weinstock. Dean Weinstock, and little piece of trivia. Yeah. Named after Lotus Weinstock. I don't know if you remember that comedian. Yes, I know yeah, Lotus yeah, Weinstock. Yeah. yeah, she's since passed away. Uh -huh. Lenny Bruce's last girlfriend. Okay, and and so what? Okay, your, but your, you'd can, be more interested in that. No, but that's a, literally. The you, fact. Could you, you just, could you end now? Is, is this is it? this a bad time to end the interview? <laughs> you were like, uh, okay. Well, I mean, first of all, we have to explain who Lotus Weinstock is to ma most people. No, no, no. Then we have to explain who, who Lenny, Lenny Bruce, Bruce is, is to okay. at least half the people. Okay, and then which is which will get exactly feed perfectly into my topic. Yeah, let's that go. I want to talk sorry, about. sorry, no, no. tangent. I don't know. Not, but I want to know what who is your character to Larry. I was his next door neighbor in season one. Okay. And then it was one of those situations where they're like, oh my God, this is great. You got great chemistry. Uh, you're going to be the neighbor on this show. This is going to be perfect. Next year, for some budgetary reason, they had to move to a different location. Yeah. 
So right, but I came back in season seven. But okay. the neighbor, the funny neighbor, the Mrs. Right. Kravitz is over. For Jeff Garland was jealous. <laughs> I Jeff Garland know, was jealous. He was not jealous. He, he was very he was, was instrumental in getting me on the show. 100% so. worried that you were going to take his place. 100%. <laughs> I just want to tell you. 100%. Not, yeah. I've never been asked to be on any part of Kirby Enthusiasm. I but love that show. you would be good. You would be good. I'd be on. fabulous. Yeah, be yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous yeah. that I'm not on that show. Well, I remember you from the Bob Newhart show. <laughs> You have an excellent memory. <laughs> I was on the Bob Newhart show when I was 10. Yeah. That's amazing that you, you remembered me back then. Do you still get residuals for I that? do. Yeah. I was also on the Newhart show later on oh, when you I was 20-something, 20 22. Yeah, right. so I, I was on both That's the newer Newhart. Newhart. <laughs> exactly. But I was not on Hope and Gloria. I was not on the uh, the other Newhart show okay. that he did after that. So you were on the newer, but I not the only, other. I was on the successful Newhart shows. There's and nothing I, better. To me, the, the first one was, to me, the the best in my opinion yeah. again different people have different people love that show up yeah. in vermont yeah Is that where that no, it, was, it yeah. was fabulous that was a good show too but i i like both shows for different reasons but there was i was when, when i was 10 years old and got to work with bob newhart there was it changed my life it did it did so how was it different after working with them and before I didn't understand what show business was exactly before i did that show mm -hmm. and then after i said oh it's a job Oh, it's a job and people can do it well and professionally and not be crazy and uh, actually do a job. Bob yeah. Newhart came in on time, did his work and wanted to go home. And that was his job. And he did it and it was brilliant and funny. And that was like, a, you know, people can go to work and do that thing. I love it. Yeah. People can go to work. That, that was his job. That's and a I nice thought, way okay. to put it. My dad went to work. And I didn't know what the fuck he did. I had right, no clue right, as what right. a writer goes into a room. Apparently a writer goes into his room when I when I was young, go, goes in your, and, be, and you're very angry and nervous and yeah. you want it to be very quiet and you want children not to play. That's the main thing I, I got. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. Let me ask you this. When yeah. you saw the Dick Van Dyke show, yes. did you go, oh, that's what my dad does? No. You know, <laughs> they were having so much fun oh, okay. and type, singing songs. <laughs> and right, right. I was sure my dad wasn't doing any of that. I okay, was uh, absolutely that's... positive. My father was, again, in a room, yeah. quietly writing, right. hunting and pecking on a typewriter, getting a little anxious and upset. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Although he's very fun in a room. Because thinking, that show, yeah. the Dick Van Dyke show, sure. inspired s generations of comedy writers yeah of like oh this is a job this looks like fun and this is you can you don't have to be the guy in front of the camera right. and you could do this and but, live in new rochelle but with lies but with lies there's a lot of work when you're right they don't show the work and they dig that show. i know of course but yeah. they but you did you do get an idea of right. like they are riffing out ideas 100 oh, percent. yeah, 100%. yeah there's yeah. like and i what? I've got to say that if you I was- You have a problem with Dick Van Dyke? No, show? I love the show. It's what's happening It's here. one of the best shows on- and uh, Carl Reiner gave me the greatest advice about making shows in the history of time, which is, of course- Slow down. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. The greatest advice. The greatest advice is- Tell it to me. From Carl Reiner from to Carl Jake Reiner Hogan to Jake Hogan. Fetterman. Write something yeah. that you- Only you on your hill can perceive- Make it your own. It's your own life. It's your own point of view. It's your uh -huh. own thing. Uh -huh. Make it something that's close, super close to you. To the that that's your world, your point of view. Right. Now, even if it's about Martians, it's your right. point of view. Make but it. Don't personal. you automatically kind of do that when you're writing? When anyway? I first started writing, I just thought, what's a funny situation? What's the, funny? What's yeah, the yeah, craziest, yeah, funniest, yeah, yeah. weirdest situation? There uh -huh. was a show I wanted to do. Uh, so let me guess. Yeah. It's about time. <laughs> it's just a guess. It's a good, keep going. good, good guess. <laughs> just trying to get something in your air. <laughs> right. Uh, that uh, it was about a billionaire who lost all his money oh. and was stuck, you know, d operating the shittiest amusement park in, in Florida, in Orlando, Florida. And I, like this I did too, I but like it has nothing idea. to do with me. I wasn't a billionaire who lost all my money. I, oh, was, okay. I wasn't married. This is a married guy. Uh -huh. like I've, there, there was nothing about it except I thought it was funny. And uh, other people did too, but it didn't. It didn't go. It didn't go. Do you remember the name of it? By Monkey name? World. Oh, that's the name of the. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Very good. Can I do a little? If you're sure. curious about my life at all, I'm very curious. You know, I one of the great minds of comedy that I've come is that I lived in Florida for six years of my childhood. Mm -hmm. I always say I grew up in Florida, but there's more to it than that. Right. But base. So anyway, I'm from Florida. And one day, my friend Jim Harwell, still alive, okay, 
uh, took me to work with him, and they worked at something called Alligator World. Gator World. Maybe it was called Gator. I don't. There was I've a number. Gator World. There was a number of okay, them. Yeah, there right. was a number of them. Right. And so, and so that day, I was like walking amongst alligators, feeding them. Right. Crazy. Yeah. Like insane Florida. Like my parents had any idea that I was that close. I was, I was fascinated by going to we went, Mar to Gator World. Wally Wallerowski and I went to Florida oh, really? to look at places. We were going to maybe film this thing. We went to Gator World. We monkey to, World? Monkey World, yeah. We went to Gator World. We went to some other shitty amusement parks. Yeah, to this see was what, shitty, yeah. This was really shitty. Gator World featured some people throwing raw chicken into alligators at yeah. some point, right? Mm -hmm. You just threw raw. And I thought- By the way, one of the jobs was cutting up the chicken, yeah. putting it in plastic bags, selling them for $3 right. or something like that. So not only were you putting yourself in danger by being close to hungry alligators jumping for food, but, but you're touching get... raw chicken. As a Jew, oh, I was concerned about touching raw chicken. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I was like, that's gonna be, what, what's gonna happen? But the chicken's kosher, right? It's it's dirty. It's like, you know, salmon, you have the, uh, you know, can get, can get Salmonella? poisoned. Salmonella? Yeah. Oh, so, I always thought it was like Jews didn't like, like the, the shellfish and the, the crab. <laughs> Jews and don't like many things. <laughs> okay, right. There's a whole it's, list right. of things that Jews don't like. You know what they do like? What's that? Complaining. They do. It's true. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, and they, we, we. We. Um, we I we. can't say they. Uh, so I brought you here to ask you a specific question. Did you? No, I, just, uh, I didn't know. A, a very specific question. Okay. And the specific question is this. Yeah. Because you are kind of an expert on comedy. Stand up, who I would say is my expert. Okay, but yes, you've, yeah. you've, you've done research from mm -hmm. Mark Twain to Dave Chappelle. I just right, look at that book, hold up that book. I'm, I'm obsessed with the- Right, um, there the, it is. Yeah. Uh, so, so you're obsessed with comedy and stand up comedy specifically. Yes. I have made a career also of trying to be funny. I used to be a stand-up comedian when I first right, started I heard out. about this. I was, uh, I was in the Groundlings and did that, and I were comedy shows and all kinds of stuff. But I find that, and I worry that, comedy is a young man's game. Mm -hmm. I worry that as I get older, and mm -hmm. I'm pretty damn old right about now, yeah. that what is funny, what is funny has changed, what people perceive as funny i won't perceive as funny i won't be in the know of what is a good choice to make in terms of a joke or in terms of what's yeah. appropriate forgetting what's pc like even throwing that away yeah like just what's funny that's hard so how do you see people staying relevant after all this time like i'm, I'm watching of uh, 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 will ferrell Mm -hmm. in Sherlock Holmes or he did a Sherlock Holmes movie or something like that and it's like it was fine and it, and maybe 10 years ago it would have been f seen funnier but the older he gets the worse it is to be in a goofy costume I think and same thing with Mike Myers who I did think you is feel brilliant. the same way about Peter Sellers when he was getting older uh you know luckily for all of us he died with he had a in heart his, attack at a certain age yeah he was and in his early thank 50s. god yeah his 50s. Oh, so you didn't want, okay uh, so we didn't we didn't get that but yes he it seemed it seemed to get straining mm -hmm. as he, he made that weird movie where he was Asian and <laughs> he made some weird movie towards the end of his career that was like oh right. oh no <laughs> don't don't do that um but but Peter Sellers at least that was his gig. Know, this is a good to me this question there's two parts to this yeah. question one is yes I do think obviously the there's three parts the first question was does what funny, what is considered funny change? Of right. course, yeah. always. Right. That's always changing. Right. So a lot of this, like, oh, I can't say it. Like, that's always been going on in comedy, always. So, right, But I've always felt like, you know, you can kind of stay on no, top of no, it. I don't, no, 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 that's a different thing. I'm just saying, yeah. like, the- Comedy does change. Comedy changes, yeah. as does everything. Well, I mean, so it's, uh, you try to show uh, the, the, the Marx Brothers Right. To young people. Right. Young, I'm That's actually a young, I mean, young. Couldn't a be a better example. 20 year old. And you just say, watch the Marx Brothers. And they stare at you. Right. Like, why do you think this is funny? There's a few. I mean, if you can get them in a theater and watch it with the crowd, mm -hmm. you can kind of, right. you can sort of like go, this is the experience of watching the Marx Brothers. I, again, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Like, the Marx Brothers who could have been more cutting end, hell, edge, hilarious comics at the right. time. I'll take another one. We spoke about them earlier. Lenny Bruce. Sure. Just people that listen to Lenny Bruce is just like, I, I don't even quite understand what he's saying because he <laughs> right. talks in this like jazzy right. vernacular. So how you tell a joke, the subject matter of the joke changes. Another reason why somebody like Mort Saul 
may rest in peace, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't maybe doesn't age as well, it's because he did topical right. stuff. So yeah. there's not going to be a lot of kids who know Dean Rusk is, <laughs> right? Right, sure. So those, so there's that element. And those topical jokes, right? That but have, the wait, 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 hold on, hold yeah, on, hold on. Right. Have the most impact in stand-up comedy. Okay. The things that are of the actual moment of today, those have the most impact in really? stand-up. You think that's the most like so? So uh, it's very rare. It's it's a it's an outlier if a routine like lasts a number of years. Like Ray Romano, who's very to, funny, does family does stuff. Does family stuff. Oh, right, right, Gaffigan. Right. Family stuff ish. Yeah, again, the observational right. ones are like uh, Gaffigan does a bit about a whale or something right. like that. And so, uh, yeah, those tend to have a little more legs than jokes about, I don't know, Ehrlichman. Right. You know, <laughs> so right. they just do. Right. Um, so there's that part of it. It's like, and, but way, even Ehrlichman even, was a White House <laughs> aide just for our audience who are watching uh, um, during the Nixon administration. But even like, but even like references and things like that, the way, you know, or talking about vaping or right. anything that's of the moment, TikTok or what, you know, X is, you know, there's no more Twitter. Did you know that? I know. But don't you think everybody's still going to call it Twitter? The mistake, if I may say, yes. Elon made is like, because the great thing about Twitter is you send a tweet mm -hmm. on X. What are you doing? It's sent across. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't. <laughs> it's not. Well, the great mistake of of Twitter was was him buying Twitter. That was the great mistake. maybe. Maybe. I mean, I don't know. You take a branded thing that's really well branded, and you say, "Let's tear down the brand." That's a very bold choice, but also a very stupid choice. Maybe not every bold decision is a good decision. I think that there's parts of his personality that are beyond brilliant. Yeah. Well, so that's interesting. Yeah. Like that, you would have all of that in the same person. Yeah. So it's like if you. Gonna spend forty four billion dollars on something. If you have it, do what you want with it. You I, that's good. It. So I'm not. I'm not gonna question it. I don't have forty four billion. So uh, to so th that's the one thing. Right. The other thing is, is it a young person's game? Right. And I think stand up comedy and most creative fields are a young person's game. Okay. I hate to say it. Right. It hurts me. Right. As someone who's not a young person mm -hmm. anymore. Right. Uh, but. Just objectively looking at it and stand up because it's very particular, does have a little more time than, let's say, because it takes you maybe 10 or 20 years to even figure it out right. for some people. Some right. people get it right away, yeah. but it can, can take you 20 years to like, oh, this is how I'm doing it. So then you have a lot of guys and women in their 40s right. or their late 30s, like like really hitting their stride comedically. So, But, but I, when I watch somebody like uh, some younger comedians, I watch Taylor Tomlinson yep. or somebody. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it. I like it's not, none of that's like beyond me. Right, right, somebody right. Somebody said, right write an act for Taylor Tomlinson. I think I could do it. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But there are other, uh, maybe there are other comedians that uh, are beyond my ken, that uh, younger comedians who- I, Right, I'm, well, there was something that started in the 90s when you were working very hard right. on television every day um, called Alt Comedy. Right. And that was, they felt like there was sort of a definite trope that was going on in these comedy clubs. Right. That Janine and Dana Gould mm -hmm. and Greg Barrett wanted to kind of rebel against and do things that are way more personal, close to almost confessional. Right. As right. opposed to here's a fun like Gaffigan. Here's a funny bit about, you know, McDonald's right. or uh, the whale or Hot Pockets or any right. of those great bits that he has there. Th these are very per very personal on that. Right. That opened up another lane of comedy. That but let me just say, oh, during as I studied the history yep. of stand up, every time there's a new way to do comedy, the older comedians were uh, rejected. Okay, it's really interesting. Well, well let me give you an example. Yeah. There was these kids that like couldn't get any traction in the big nightclubs, so they put their act on records that. Th Primarily after Red Fox did it was um, Shelley Berman and Bob Newhart. Mm -hmm. And they sold millions right. of records. Right. And they win Grammy Awards. Mm -hmm. And there's people in Vegas who are making 18 grand a week, nightclub comedians right. from that generation mm -hmm. that I'm sure you know these sure. guys, who are just like, 
oh, wait, I'm not going to put my act on a record for a right. dollar ninety eight. Right. I won't or, be able to do it anymore. Or yeah, right. when yeah. I'm making eighteen grand a week right. here in Vegas. So they didn't even understand it, and so this story keeps repeating itself right. over and over again with the internet. What's happening right now? Well, tell me, what is the internet? Because I don't know. Maybe I'm too old for okay, that. Okay, come on. Okay. <laughs> so uh, yeah. All right. Well, but but what is so that, that's I'm, interesting to me i'm 60 years old yeah and i still for comedy being a fan of comedy mm -hmm. making people laugh has been part of who i have been since i was three I love right it. Love so it. i'm three years old desperately trying to win friends and and affection right. through comedy right and now i'm 60 and i still desperately try to win <laughs> friends and affection and now you're telling me i'm too old to do no, it no i'm not saying that's you're what i'm too, hearing i'm not saying you're too i'm saying the peak of people doing it right. tends to be on the younger well, but side. how do i stay how do i stay in the game it's <laughs> it's not about you know what i would do yeah. i would take uh rob reiner's or carl reiner's advice yes and just whatever your perspective is now. Right. I'm the guy who doesn't get it. I'm right. the guy who's struggling to be relevant. I'm the guy who's uh, whatever. That would be, again, you're asking. Right. Who's, the, the, com the, who's the, the comedian out there that you just don't get? You just think. Oh, I can't. You just, it's just. I get them all. I get them all. You know, a lot of people. Here's the interesting one. Yeah. A lot of people come up to me and they go, like, I don't get Pete Davidson. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I totally get Pete Davidson. Okay. Because Pete Davidson is what I call a zeitgeist comedian, mm -hmm. which means he's of this moment. Right. He's got the tattoos. He's uh, filled with neurosis, borderline suicidal right. at times. Right. Like he lives uh, this. So in other words, that very much speaks to a whole generation of right. Americans, right. young Americans who are just like, I'm anxious. I did thing. So he's like part of that right. as opposed to Let's say a, uh, you know, but that's his persona. So that's that's who he is. No, that is a, that's who he is that's anyway. Because he, is. he you know, had this crazy trauma right. when he was a kid, and so when he tells stories about his life, right, they aren't always the funniest of stories, but they're stories about his life. And people are like, "That's again." What did we say earlier, Jay? Are that old people don't get it. Now the comedy changes. Comedy changes. So he's um, just telling stories that don't necessarily have a punchline, or no, not necessarily have a. Have a they do. They have enough. There's enough. There's enough comedy material. It's not just a monologue like right. something out of uh, Chekhov or right. something like. That. Right. It's a real. He's actually doing comedy, but it's not quite like. Oh, I'm gonna do a bit and try to find every little nugget to hang on to this right. bit to make it a perfect little hunk Seinfeld right. style. Right. It's not gonna be that, or right. even Sebastian Maniscalco style. Right. You know what I mean? Where it's like, okay, I'm gonna take apart what it's like to um, go to the grocery store and suddenly have to check out myself. Right, right. You know? Yeah, no, I, I he's, so, Sebastian, Sebastian clearly has. He's in both worlds. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, but I, I feel like he's more in the world of Jan Murray than he is in Pete right, Davidson. Right, right, right. So, so and, 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 and Pete, is more a little bit more in the world of Jeanine yep, and yep. and David Cross and those guys. You got it. But so, but all right. So I'm, I'm aware of it. Uh, <laughs> but you know, then I see I I watch a lot of stand up comedy, especially on the TikTok. You do. I watch oh constantly on the TikTok. Well, this is the the trend that's going on in TikTok is for some reason, people at home on their computer <laughs> will watch you on the right. phone. Love crowd work. Have you noticed that? Yes. Sure. Sure. So this Big J Ogerson is all crowd work. Uh, you Big know. J, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, he's phenomenal. Amazing. So yeah. it's like, but I get it. I mean, it's like if you can if you can walk out there and just start building a rapport with an audience and then find people to sort of exploit. No, no, people love it. Yeah. And it really and mm. it's great for a couple of reasons. One, it promotes you as a comic when you put it on TikTok, right. reels, whatever, insta. And then two it doesn't burn your material. Right. So when you put out your special, right. you still have like original stuff. Right. So it's, a, it's, it's like a win-win. So here's what's going on, just if you're curious. I am. Comedians now, when they go on the road, they hire people to videotape, okay. not only themselves, right. but the audience. So they show the, the audience, the lady in the audience. Right. The, and so that's kind of new. I thought you were going to say they hired people to be shills in the audience. No, no, okay. no, 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 no. I, I don't think that. They, no, they hire people to 
tape that and then right. they put that stuff up right and that promotes them okay. so it's in the old days when i started like the big thing to have if you were like a middle comic like mm -hmm. wanted to open for the headliner was to have a car because you could drive the guy <laughs> right. to jersey right. da, 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 right. da, da. now if you have video equipment oh you say i'll videotape your yeah, act if you let me middle yes i got it yes okay yeah but then you have to edit it too I, that's a good question. <laughs> Maybe that's a good question. So, so like, I don't know, but I do know that is a skill where, like, if you were like going on the road, you're like, guess what? I can I can videotape your stuff after I do my twenty minutes. Wow! And then, so so if I can get a video gear together <laughs> and call John Mulaney exactly. and say, Mulaney, <laughs> yeah, I got video gear. <laughs> Yeah. But there's a level of comedian that plays these theater, these small theaters. So it's um Yeah. Who who Yeah. Who in your research of this book? Yes. Um The History of Stand Up was the most I mean you knew a lot of this of these people but right, was right. there any surprises for you when you did deeper dives into them? <sighs> Not, it's not there's not that much much deep diving in my book it's just more laying out the whole story so it's just a shallow glance at some of the some of the bigger names yeah, of comedy. yeah. okay so i just i just bought your book i'm very upset now that you're it's gonna be disappointed shallow glance. you're gonna be disappointed yeah i mean like it's who just, am i gonna morty gunty if there's a morty paragraph gunty on is, more morty gunty no there's not a paragraph well when i was writing it i was like how do i tell this story right. without like this there was this guy, then there was this guy, right. then there was this guy, then there was this girl, right. then there was this girl, then this guy. You have like, to talk about who changed what the people who big changes. Yeah, so those ones. So I talk. Yes, those get more, and the other ones sort of just get name check right. as as part of an error, so they understand. Right. Oh, this was a nightclub comic, Morty Gunter. You right. spoke about he was a Catskill comic. Yeah. Right. So my father wrote for Morty Gunter. My father wrote for Morty Gunty. And, and Toadie, right? And, and Toadie and yeah. many other, and uh, Jan Murray and a bunch of other people. Also wrote for Connie Stevens, singers. He wrote for really? Jackie DeShannon. I don't know why. Really? Yeah, he wrote, like, yeah, he told Diana Ross. What, the, the, we wrote bits for all these people. I so it's, it. it's crazy. Uh, but but Because those people needed an act. Right. To, and so they needed some pattern in between the songs. Exactly. And, and get he me a writer. writer. Get yeah. me a writer to write me some jokes. Diana Ross may not be the funniest of people, so I don't know how you negotiate that and figure out what's funny about Diana Ross, what she can deliver and what she can't, but you try. Just send her a page, a couple pages, and see if right. she likes something. So, um, I, I was actually very interested in Will Rogers, was okay. a guy who yeah. was, um, because he was kind of the first comedian to do like a, just a comedy tour, where right. he would go, not vaudeville, this was just like, and uh, uh, auditoriums right. and all across the country and you have an opening act, a music act. And so like he was one of the first to really go on, on the road and do that. Right, but he got a little vaudeville -y. he got his rope no, tricks. No, he came out of vaudeville. Ro rope came. tricks and stuff like that? Yeah, he came out of vaudeville. Yeah. He, he right. used to not speak at right. all what was called a dumb act. Right. And then he became like, he would write a he column, he's a movie star. He was like, so right. he was a multimedia guy. Right. And then had this horrific plane crash that killed him in 1935 right, right. so um no that was horrible. so and, people, and so and, and yeah, anyway i was like kind of fascinated by his career did and you talk about how he hid his native american you know he didn't ancestry really, he, well he was he was a yeah. indian as we used to call it right who, who first peoples he native was a, american oh is that how you say yeah, yeah okay so he's an indian <laughs> yeah okay all right <laughs> he's a, uh and uh he was a cowboy he was an Indian who right. played a cowboy. Right, that's right. That's really interesting. Yeah. The enemy of the Indian. Right. Well, his family sold out to the oh. to the people, white people. Um, they they made a deal at a certain point with with people yeah. saying, "We want your land, right. and we'll pay you X amount of dollars for your land." These his family said, "Yeah," and a bunch of other people said, "No way," and his family got kind of rich. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, a lot of people got yeah. rich in Oklahoma, right? And so it it worked out well for for him and his family, and sort of assimilating seemed like a pretty good choice. Yeah, yeah. No, he's a really interesting guy, and again, he started out doing, like I said, a dumb act, just doing right. rope tricks and stuff, and then became like the stand up, the the in my opinion, the father of political stand up comedy. So when you see John Stewart, or yeah. you see, um. Trevor Noah, who just retired, is he retired? Did he? I know he left the show, but I don't know they retired. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, you see any of these guys, you know, doing political jokes? They're all from 
Will Rogers. Right, right. And some do them more biting, like Bob Hope did political jokes, but they were a little more gentle. Right. Is the way I would say it, right? And he would tell you, he was certainly a Bob, uh, whatever was happening in the moment, his joke writers would just write that. What would he be just talking about he earlier? Topical, topical. You said topical. That means everything. But it's it's topical. It could also mean what the Indi Cleveland Indians are doing. Right. I know they don't call them that anymore. <laughs> but, uh, you, what's your deal with the Indians? I don't what's know. Your I problem keep bringing with it up. I'm bringing it up. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, they don't. They don't. They're not even. They're not even can't call themselves the Indians yeah, anymore. Yeah. <laughs> then you're saying that. Cleveland I know. Indians. I know. I'm sorry. It's really I'm very it's edgy. It's very, very edgy. problematic. Very uh, uh, problematic. Yeah. You're not gonna. I know. I know. Gonna, the young people are gonna. I I live by the. You know. By the what? By the Carl Reiner okay. rule. Uh, this is Who, my perspective. You're being authentically you. No, it's just like if I'm going to call them Indians my whole life and then. Yeah. It's just weird. They decided they don't want to be called Indians. Because it's not even their name. There's somebody else called them Indians. I got you. I got you. Yeah, All right. it's bad. You can shame me. Right. right. I mean, there must have been a name people called you in school you didn't like and said, don't call me that. Call me Wayne. <laughs> the Florida. Come on. In Florida, they must have called you lots yeah, of things. Florida was crazy. Is Florida, was Florida a good place to grow up? Very good. Why? Because you were, we were outside nine, excuse me, 11 months out of the year. There was no season that you couldn't be get, be outside to play. What part of Florida? This is where it gets bad. Yeah. You ready? Huh? I talk about it in my act. It's right. called Plantation, Florida. <laughs> it's okay. very problematic. All right. So they're so not we, changing their name. They're not right? changing their name. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's. That is true, Bob. <laughs> I yeah. yeah. So in, in Plantation, Florida, they still have master bedrooms. They, they don't they have might, primary. That's right. They, they don't have primary bedrooms. Yes, okay. Yes, yeah. Yes, I understand. Yes. All right. Well, I think it is probably. I'm getting a feeling you want to be part of it, this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Part of the plantation world? No, 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 no. Like, like, oh, I want to be part of like what's politically correct. Well, stuff. no. Here's the thing. I don't care about what's politically correct. What I do care about is yeah. am I missing the boat? Am right. I am so, I the old guy in the back saying you know in the old days Indians. what was funny was <laughs> it was Indians yeah, yeah and we yeah. played cowboys and what where I'm missing what's happening now or mm -hmm. or anything both personally and professionally I want to make sure that if I'm writing something that's funny I yeah to to not be a hack you have to know what's hacky and and so. You sort of have to sort of mm -hmm. gear yourself. It is an interesting, you know. But doesn't it on some? And again, we're really deep diving yeah. here. Good. On some level, does it feel like you're second guessing everything you're doing, and you can't just be naturally Jay? No, I think you start by making what's funny, and then it goes through the computer. Like, let's let's check this. Let's look at it again before you put it on as a writer. Before you put it on paper and send it out to somebody, let's just look at one more time. Okay. Let's review. Let's as a as a comedian, right. you can't do that. You sort of have to just go on stage or go somewhere and say the thing and see that's, if it gets. That's the life I kind of like to live. Yeah. But I'm, but if people know I'm a big believer in what George Garland said, which yeah. was like, it's not the words, it's the intent behind the words. Of course, but that's not true anymore. It's not true. Anymore, no, you can't. But, that's another. But problem. that's why I'm still holding on to that. The intent is everything. That's why I grew up with the intent. I could make any joke if people knew my intent. If I mm -hmm. knew my intent was good, if they knew I, I'm not a misogynist, I'm not a racist, and I'm not anything, I could make fun of those people by mimicking them and saying something that was outrageously misogynist. I mean, right, of course. But of course. I can't do that anymore because it, my intent doesn't matter. I will just be branded. It's about the impact. Yes. Who hears it? If somebody can mistake it for something real, and then, we're really then we're, getting into this. Then this we're doomed. Yeah, but I mean, that's. I don't know. I, I'm I'm not as I uh, worried about the future of stand up as some people are. Why? Because I feel like comedy is bigger than all of these things. It's it's almost like a it's almost like a a flea. Like like it's an annoyance. Right. It's anti comedy. I get all of that stuff, but comedy is just just way it's way stronger. It's like it has it's. It's deeper. It has more we, uh, um, gravitas right. than any of these little. Oh, you can't say that. You can't say this. That's a, like it's like yes. Well, that's we're in this weird phase now. 
obviously it comes from a place of compassion. Right. Everyone knows that. Right, right. Everyone knows that. Right. So we're like, all right, let's try to figure but this out. I don't think this will last. I think this, Who knows? this conservatism of language can't possibly last. It but can't. it's interesting. It's not it's, from the conservative side. It's such a muffling of ideas and thoughts that- Again, you, I don't want to be like part like, it can be. It if is. you allow it. It is. It's, you it, think it, like it is. I, of course. It All is right. a muffling of ideas and thoughts. It's not not taking into consideration what people mean behind what they say. Right. And the just taking things on the very face value right. means you don't get sarcasm. <laughs> means you right, don't get right, right. parody. <laughs> means you don't get... The essence of comedy is taking something and sort of blowing it out of proportion. If you're just saying the blowing out of proportion and they just assume that's the case, well, they're not going to get the joke. And that's ridiculous. I, yeah, I mean, I I kind of agree with you, but I feel like it's not as big a problem as you think it is. Well, it's not for like Chappelle or somebody who says like I don't care anymore. <laughs> like, come no, come think... at me, come at me with your right, your, right, your, right, your, right, your, right, your right, barbs and even your attacks, physical attacks. Right, He's, he doesn't care. He doesn't need to care. He's right. big enough. No, because when I was working on that Carlin documentary, he said something. He said that political correctness is America's newest form of intolerance, and what makes it pernicious you know carlin with those right. words yep. ninth grade dropout sure. by the way okay what makes it pernicious is it comes under the guise of tolerance yeah i agree that with that is like, yeah so you're on the carlin no I'm, yeah. I'm totally on carlin's side i also right. think that you know I, I i you and i both teach at a university yeah and there are rules about what you can say and not say. Oh, Jay, at a university. I saw I saw you go through a thing like that. I don't know if you want yes, to talk about it. That's, oh, sure. Too we can absolutely. Is I, that I, too personal? No, not too personal. I, I went at some point. <laughs> uh, I, I was doing a sketch course and a guy. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> no, it's OK. A guy, no, no, no. I, you think it's dangerous? You think this no. is a dangerous subject? I don't care. No, no, no. All right. If you don't care, let's I hear don't it. care. So uh, the, there was a sketch about uh, I was doing authority. This. Right. Authority. What, what I was the guest. Right. We do a Saturday Night Live show. Correct. And we were doing a sketch about a cop or a something. A cop. Yeah. A cop. Okay, go ahead. Who was, and this one one student was, uh, not so, the, the cop was arresting a guy a, uh, who kept claiming that he was a limited he uh, uh llp and therefore he kept using uh, right, right, catchphrases right. to say he's not guilty you can't arrest me because i'm you know, i'm everything i do is limited it's right, limited right, i'm right. a limited liability right and that's the whole that's in my name and then i thought it'd be funny if the policeman also said something that was what the George Floyd cops used to say when they said, well, I'm not responsible. I forgot the exact phrasing of it, uh -huh. but the, I'm not responsible because I have immunity, some some kind of right, right, right. verified immunity, something like that, because that that to, to be as as ridiculous as what the other guy this was guy, saying. Yeah. And one of the students in the class flipped out. He said, you cannot use the the words limited immunity or whatever that was in a comedy context it's just at all at all even it's, though it's, it was a real thing it's real thing it's it was in the zeitgeist yeah, it's what yeah. people were using i was using it to show that limited immunity right. is a bullshit thing right, just right, as much right, as right. as as uh, limited liability but and even within so the context my, of that. my intent did not matter <laughs> the fact that i'm not for murdering George Floyd did not matter. <laughs> uh, they came to me. The university came to me and said, you should apologize to this kid for saying that was OK to maybe use that phrase that was tangentially involved in the George Floyd death. And so I made that apology. I said, listen, I am sorry. Wait, hold on. Yeah. See, this is where I come in. Yeah. Because I saw the apology right. and mm -hmm. it wasn't to one kid. No, it's the class. It was the entire class. Right. We That's stopped right. rehearsal. Right. So you can make this. I made an indictment. Mia Copa? Is yeah, that is that say, what does I'm, that mean? What does Mia Copa I'm, mean? I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So the the Mia, I'm sorry to make this. And to me, it yeah. looked like. I'm Go this is going to be harsh. This yeah. is going to be harsh because huh? we both work at USA. I don't right. want to say. Uh, right. It looked a little like a Soviet show trial. <laughs> okay. That's what it looked it's, like to it's me. That's fine. I, and there's my friend Jay right, Hogan right. having to stand up because he. I, and you were happy to do yes, it? Yes, I was happy to do it. And okay. here's why. Because this guy was really upset. Right. And I didn't care. It was just a pitch of a joke. Right, right, so, right, right. So right. my pitch of a joke made this guy really upset. They shouldn't walk around feeling miserable and upset right. about this joke of, on some dime store, Saturday Night Live. It, it, it yeah. has no impact at all. If the only impact is I can make this guy feel better 
by saying to the whole class. And that was more important to you to make one guy feel better than the like, hey, this is what happens in joke writing and pitching is that I did loose ideas. You thought that was more important than I did in, teaching. In the university setting, yeah. I did think that was more important because in this, in the, in they, they think it's more important. Right. That's our bosses there think that, that is more important. And whereas if I'm the boss of a TV show, I'm going to say what's funny is much more important and what my audience will get is much more important. What we're doing here, what ultimately. But even if it, let's say that George, that the cop joke doesn't make right. it, but just the idea, this is what I'm talking about. Right. Just the idea that you can pitch it without having to be having to that everything's fair game. Crawl right. back to the right. thing and beg for yeah. forgiveness from no. a class. I, Listen, I would love the world to be more like that, but it's not. And right now, we're protecting feelings, the feelings of this the is minority it. This is it. for the majority. And that's fine. Most students, by the way, came to me and said, that's a great, that's fine. Right, 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 right. No, Whether it was a good joke right. or not, it was they just a pitch. Yeah. fine with the pitch. Yeah, yeah. S this person was super offended. This person was not black, by the way. Right. Was super offended. But, and that's, that's fine. And because they thought, that person thought that you couldn't even be in the area. They, they thought that if you're that it is it is untouchable. Don't make don't bring humor into the world of what happened to George Floyd in any way, shape, or form. Don't do Interesting. it. Interesting. Don't do it. In, and, in in a way, that's the essence of humor, right? Correct. That's so why, that's how I've dealt with everything in my life, from the Holocaust on down. Everything, yeah. everything in my life, from my son's birth. So my, like people ask me like, you know, mm -hmm. how's your son? I go, oh, you didn't hear? Like yeah, I will, yeah, 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 I, will yeah, I, love it. I will make people <laughs> right, right, right. think my son is dead <laughs> yeah, for a yeah, brief yeah, moment yeah, in course, time course. because it's a funny joke. Make me laugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even though my son is fine, because and I'm and nothing and somebody, a friend of mine can die, and I will make a joke. Yeah. Pretty quickly from that moment, you know, and and that's it was a very interesting thing to witness. And again, I understand we're in a, yeah. we're in a cocoon, but I would think I love just, talking about this. By the way, I'm so glad you brought that up. You do? Yeah, I was a little worried about. No, it. No, no. Okay, this show is about really digging deep into anything. So this is great because you know. Again, you heard what I said when I thought when yeah. I saw you up there. Like I a show felt, child. Yeah. yeah, I felt like what's yeah. going on here? Right. And I was, Why? that was new. Jake. I'm new to this, this whole thing. Yeah, and yeah. It's fine. I mean, it's by the way, we're teaching like a dumb, like a very little <laughs> oh, sketch geez. course. Okay. All oh, that sort of stuff. But yeah, yeah. If, I don't know who's going to be a pro and who's not going to be a pro at the end of all that. So if I, and and even in the world of professional writing, when uh, people are on my show, yeah. I still have to be very careful you, about yeah, what yeah, I yeah. say and what, what, who's going to be offended about what. Of course, of course. And, about what the audience is going to be perceiving. Of course, of course. Those things are changing. Oh, but they've always changed. Right. They've, oh, people have been complaining about comedians and the line and what is the line? Right. What is the line? I mean, George Carlin, let's go back to that because I, because I feel like he really gave it a lot of thought. Right. Was said, it's the comedian's job to find out where the line is. Right. And then deliberately go over it. Right. That's not my stand-up. Right. You know my stand-up. Right. It's very gentle. Oh, it's but... the weakest of all stand-up. Okay, you didn't have to say that. <laughs> I mean... So of course. No, sure, it's like sure. barely considered still, comedy. One of the greatest jokes... <laughs> you probably don't even think this joke is funny anymore, but... Like, oh, no. Uh, you, stand up, you stood up... It was a few years ago when this was actually new. It was like, ah, I didn't. I made some bad investments. <laughs> I threw all my money into gluten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I... <laughs> I will at some point I will steal some like, version I'd of that like, joke. I'd like the idea that gluten is something you could invest, <laughs> invest in. in. Exactly. Right. That me to too. me is the idea right. of that joke. But I also was like <laughs> the wrong time. Yes, yeah, to, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, to to invest in to to. I think that's a great, funny, rich area. Like just in the Me Too era. In the Me Too era, I just yeah. started a magazine called Shut Up Whore Magazine, oh. and it was the wrong time. Yeah, yeah. It was the wrong time. <laughs> A few years earlier, it would have made a mint. You know, I used to have a tag to that joke. <laughs> Is that right? It was, yeah, I go. But I come from a long line of bad investors. My grandfather, uh, great grandfather in Germany, in invested in Zyklone A. Very <laughs> so close. So close. <laughs> uh, so for your kids at home, Zyklone B it doesn't, you don't have to explain. No, you don't have to okay. All right. Good. Good. Okay. They they'll get it. They'll, they'll get, get it. Kids they, love it. They, the they, kids love the Holocaust. <laughs> they love the Holocaust. And my my audience is all under twenty. So, so this close, is perfect. So, yeah, close, so close. So close. Um but that's what's funny. That that is funny and that is edgy. And somebody could be offended by that joke. 
uh, I, I, but that's why I don't worry. You know. But I but and I kind of don't worry about that that much in life either except that i saw you have to well that was like that was that was a, that, that was, was in a class you that say was it was a specific setting. thing i don't think i would apologize for it in a conversation like right, i would right, right. uh and i would say you're entitled to your opinion but i didn't mean to offend you or i could, right, and right. I, and i would apologize somebody was really upset and hurt by something yeah I said, you, who wants I would to hurt somebody yeah, yeah. Uh, apologize so I, that's but, not I, the goal. but i just remember as a kid there was an expression and i'm not saying i endorse it right. but i just remember and I, you know, I don't swear, but it was like f them if they can't take a joke. Right, right. Like that was a thing. Right. Like you, like if you can't take a joke, it's not our problem. Right. And, and that, so that's all changed. That right? has changed to to a certain extent. And you can't because this world of HR and there's a world I of, know, HR. Of, of 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 corporate. Can I say one thing that yes. I feel very fortunate? Yeah. Being a stand up comedian mm-hmm. is that there's no HR in stand up right. comedy. Right. It's, I mean, maybe when you play college right. campuses, which is why comedians. It's not so good for waitresses who work in comedy clubs that there's, that there's terrible, no HR. Terrible, it's terrible for terrible, them. Terrible, yes. terrible. But there was no, you know, there was never uh, that. Right. It was like, I do my job, I get my money. Right. And then, and then I get some free yeah. uh, fried cheese and, and Coca Cola. And one of the great things about talking to comics yeah. Yeah. is they, at least for the most part, understand the ability to just make a joke about anything. That that's okay. That of you can course. make a joke about anything, and that's what I love. I love to I surround love myself creating it with I, my yeah. friends or people, like-minded people who think it's okay. There's a really freedom in that. It's a, yes, there's a real freedom. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, are we wrapping? No, we're gonna we're gonna transition. Okay. To question time. <laughs> yes. It's question time. Uh, there are 126 questions. I have. I'm not going to ask you all 126. I'm yep. going to ask you one or two. Do can I call out the number and you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You ready? Uh, well, it's a letter from A to G, and it's a number from one to eighteen. So there's an A one. There's an A one to A eighteen, and there's a B one to B eighteen. Okay. Let's start with and up to G. So let's yeah. let's go right to the F for Fetterman. Okay. Let's go to F four. F four, which is also a jet. Okay. <laughs> F four is yeah. Uh, how do you balance spending time with oh, different Jesus. friends and what factors influence your decisions? Now, also bear in mind, a computer generated these questions. I understand. Not a human being. I understand. So how do you balance the time uh, to spend between different friends and factor what influences that decision? I, I, again, what? I Don't deny the computer. The computer's I'm asking a really good question. Well, this is the thing. Listen, human. If I had friends, right. I would be able to answer okay. this, but I don't. I so, live by so myself in a very- You have been a little <laughs> isolated in your life. I'll yeah, say yeah, this. Yeah, You're yeah. a little I'm not isolated. Married, I don't think. No. But you have- I am an uncle. You have friends. Which, by the you way, are... I feel like the word uncle, as we talked right. about- Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You can't use the word uncle anymore. Uncle doesn't think... mean what it used to be. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It used to be a thing. Like right. the man from uncle. Right. Uncle no, no. Vanya. No. Like, no. But I mean, I'm an uncle. I'm a great uncle, in fact. I'm an uncle, too. I'm just saying I, there was a show called Uncle. I just feel like there's a, sh- like uncle has an inappropriate touching. Yeah, I guess so. T- Am I wrong about right. that? No, it can't be. Uncle and niece. Like, I'm with my niece. Yeah, There's yeah. a wink to, like, <laughs> is that your niece? Like, I don't know. But yeah, I guess right. so. But I mean, really, there is a relationship of an uncle. I'm an, I'm an of uncle. Of course, uncle. of course. Of course, but you have friends. Yes, how do, I you, have... how do you choose to have to call somebody? I... Say, I'm going to have dinner. You want to come have dinner? The people that I have the most fun with are All the right. ones that I call. Do you rotate the question? The computer wants to know: Do you rotate friends? I don't think of it in that kind of like. Oh, I have like this circle of friends, and I have to hit this one and this one and this. Well, then how I... do you? Well, then how do you keep? If friendship is contact, yeah. How do you keep the plate spinning? How do you? How do you know? I just text and see what's going on. Okay, it's very it's very organic. You don't text da- me a lot, da- Jay. We're not super text- close friends. We're not super <laughs> close friends. Ouch! God, that hurts. All, All right. right, that's true, right? That's fine. That's, that's fine. true. That's, that's true. fine. That's true. Yeah, that's it true. Is true. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I don't text you a lot. I know. Just saying, it's equal. Okay. It's not just you. I like that you made that an attack. <laughs> it wasn't. It was like... All right. No, next number and a uh, letter. Okay, number. okay. Let's go B. Yeah. Because uh, we just did the Zyklon B joke. Yeah, very uh, funny. B. It's up to 18? Up to 18. Let's do B18. Let's B18. Do B18. 
Be you, 18, be 18 and be an adult if you, and get to vote. If you can change one thing yes. from your past. One, oh my God. One thing from your past, what would it be? It's a good question. Thank yeah. you, computer. And now there's one I can't talk about All because right. it's too painful. Um, well, I wrote something sarcastic in this girl Noelle's yearbook mm -hmm. when I graduated high school right. that I really, really regret. Okay. And I was trying to be funny, mm -hmm. but again, look was at, it physical about her physical? No, 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 right. no. But it was just, it was horrific. But I have so many of those things, which is why when I hear people go, my motto is no regrets. I'm like, how could you live <laughs> right. a life with no regrets? It seems right. impossible. Well, but this like is I have so many of them. Right. But have you forgiven yourself? Saying yes to this. So exactly. Kidding. Have you forgiven yourself for no, from writing Noel? No, with, writing I don't Noel. forgive no. myself. Have you spoken to Noel about it? Yeah. And uh, years She's later? She's fine with it. Okay. And you've apologized? Yeah. You did this Russian show trial. You went up, you took the... Yes. I know it's a small thing, but it really still hurts uh, me that I right. was that insensitive. But, now, but you were 18 or yeah, 17, 17, 18. 17, yeah. And now you're not, and you know the difference. <laughs> Right? I look, you're going to make mistakes, but you asked no, me. No, but I'm talking about regret. Like like I'm saying there That's is a regret. I do a regret, regret, but you don't have to live in that regret. Still, you did it. You made a mistake, you apologized, right. and it learned from it and you went moved on. Yeah. I free you from that. You don't ever have to feel bad about what you wrote from Noah. You've already made amends with her. Make amends with yourself. Thank you, Rabbi. Honestly, can you forgive yourself? Can you say, I no, I can't. No, well, that's next, weird. Next question. All right. That's crazy to me. Okay, last question. <laughs> that you was can't insightful, fucking forgive right? Yourself? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm mind this part of you <laughs> yeah, that I hate. Yeah, 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 that you will, not, yeah. you will not forgive yourself. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. I want you to love yourself more. I know. All right. That's tough. All right. Um, <laughs> what, what, uh, last question. Yes. Uh, letter and number. Okay. Um, I'm rolling the thing. All right. All right let's go. Chick, 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 chick. It's not going to be A. Okay. It's not going to be A. Let's That's too go, easy. Let's go D. Yeah. D, which is the final passing grade. You right. You can still get a D and pass, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. um, D. D2. D3. D3. <gasps> D3. 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 This is a weak question because it's not in bold. All right. Do you want to do it? No, no. No, no. You we can know. cheat. You too can late, cheat. Too late. Too late. Too you late. can cheat. What's your favorite thing to do with your family and why? <laughs> this is a terrible question. What's your favorite thing to do with your family and why? And your family could be your niece. It could be your close friends. What's your favorite thing to do with your mishpocha, with your people? Well, I... Because I'm not super close super close with my family right i my favorite how could you be you do, you yeah. hate yourself how can you it's, be close with anyone i like that you extrapolate one <laughs> that i won't right. forgive myself for right. that to uh, hating myself yeah. um i would say reminisce reminisce i love looking at old pictures oh, i like really i like being in that era you flip through a book you see a picture of you and noel <laughs> it's all good times i love that you know this story <laughs> i don't think i've ever told it all so right. it's interesting all right well i hope noel is a viewer at some point <laughs> and writes in her version yeah, of what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. I had a yearbook issue, which was completely oh. different. My yearbook issue was there was a, a lovely, lovely girl named Linda Jaffe, uh -huh. who in seventh grade inscribed in my book, my yearbook, I really, uh, I think you're really nice. I hope we see each other over the summer and wrote her phone number in the book. Yeah. And I didn't see it until I was 35. Why not? I didn't. I didn't look through the book. I didn't. Why? I got autographs and things. I didn't look through the book. I you were that popular. I was. I uh, know. I was just lazy. I just didn't want to what read it. What high school is this? This was a, a Portola Junior High School in the Valley in Tarzana. Tarzana. And in Tarzana. Horrible. I could. I love this girl. She was adorable. I could have had a relationship with her. She could have broken my heart. But no, nothing. Anyway, Sorry. I feel bad. That's on you. That's, that's 100% on that's me. That's on you, yeah. All right, well, that was the last question. Now we're yeah, going to yeah. go uh, to viewer mail, or listener mail. Viewer, yeah, no, yes. no, viewers. Yeah, yeah. I guess there are viewers, but My, this, it's mostly for right listeners. There. Yeah. Okay. Hi, guys. Now it's time for listener mail. All right, so here's here's the question. Yeah. Um. Oh, shit. That's not the good question. Yeah, pick a good one. All right, no, it's it's already been picked. All right, this is <laughs> this is a very long. This is a real question from a real person who wrote it in, and it's absurdly long. 
but I'm going to try to. Let's do it. All right. Dear Jay, I have been struggling with making friends for a while now, and I came across your self-help, your self-help podcast. This is not really a self-help podcast, but fine, uh, which I think could help me. I find it challenging to approach new people and strike up conversations. I often feel like I don't fit in. It's difficult for me to be myself around new people. I worry that I might come across as awkward or boring, which only makes the situation worse. I tried joining social clubs and groups, but I find it hard to connect with others. I feel like uh, everyone else already knows each other and I'm the outsider looking in. I'm really starting to feel the effects of my loneliness and I know I need to do something about it. It's pretty funny. <laughs> maybe maybe his problem is he keeps writing, saying long things. Anyway, uh, do you have any advice for me on how to overcome my social anxiety and connect with new people? I would love to hear your insights on how to build lasting friendships and become more confident in social situations. <laughs> Thank you for your time and consideration. Sincerely, Awkward Alan. Awkward Alan? That's I a know. mouthful. You're fucked, right? I mean, isn't the answer to Awkward no, Alan? No, I have okay. the perfect answer What's the for answer? Alan. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I like your initial instinct is just like dismiss the guy. <laughs> That's funny. Throw him away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Alan, you'll what's have a good, chance. What's to... good is he to me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, read How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's okay. really, and the number one thing on when you meet people right. is you, everyone's worried of like, oh, this story is going to be boring. Right. Yeah, your story is boring. Right. So don't tell your stories ask ask questions in interesting questions also and right listen to what the person says right. and then follow up in the same way that jay just was able to call back noel right. now we have a thing because yeah because sure. he listened to so what i said so it's all about it's, it's literally it's about taking the focus right. off of yourself alan right. i'm looking at jay right i'm talking to you alan. I'm, I'm alan right yeah you're alan i'm right alan. Now. Alan. alan i'll be alan <laughs> He sounds very verbose based on that thing. Yeah. I, know, I should think, like people. People I know, should, I know, should I know, ask questions to people. First of all, I loved in the thing, he's like, I joined social clubs. Yeah. What are social clubs? I know, groups. That sounds like something out of the 30s or A -A. something. A -A. A -A. Oh, okay, Come on. Okay. Let's be let's be honest. Uh, uh, Alan's struggling with way more than social. But no. that is the secret no, to connecting that, with people, to getting women right. to make out with you. The whole thing that okay. is the so asking questions it, and be and not be a creep about it. Right. But, and if you're funny, you'll yeah, be able to. It may not be maybe, funny. Uh, yeah, no, but, not, but just be, be likable. The other thing is, if you can convince somebody that you like them, that they're likable. That goes a long yeah, way to make people like talking about themselves. But also, people like to feel like they're liked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's yeah, the thing. Yeah. I read a book about uh, selling salesmanship. Yeah, all and of this is very similar. And these the, these theories keep getting regurgitated from you know how to win friends right. or think and grow rich right up to there's a guy named oh my god I'm going to blank on his name Gary V. Do you know you know Gary V. Uh, he oh it's no. incredible Banner. Chuck, I think, is his full name. Yeah. But he does internet content on just like how to build a business okay. and stuff and grind it out. But he gives a lot of really great old school advice on like how to navigate through life. And yeah. it's really, he's really excellent. Gary, if you're listening. Gary. I'm Gary. looking at you, Gary, yeah. now. That's be, weird. I'll be Gary. Yeah. Hi. Hey, Wayne. You've never heard of Gary nice Vaynerchuk? I, I, I have. I actually yeah, yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's really good. He's Not, real. And he puts, he's, he's really smart. Because he puts all of the stuff up for free, right? Like all, it's not like buy my book. It's right. not like some Tony Rob, right? Aunt, Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins, yeah, yeah. It, it's not like one of those kind of things where he, it's like, hey, get my tapes, right. get my. He's building his uh, his fan base in other ways and and making money in other ways. But I f I feel like it's genuine. I okay. feel like he's like, oh, I never knew I had this skill to inspire people in this way, right. and I'm just gonna run with it. And okay. I have my business, I have my right. branding business or whatever, buying, right. I, you know, cards or baseball. Right. Cards. I don't know what he does, but. It's really, it's a fascinating and one of It'd the- It'd be awesome if that was his business, buying baseball cards. He, I know. He made a, few, I think a fortune. He, I think He's he a is. billionaire from the baseball card business. <laughs> but he, uh, but it actually, you know, everyone makes fun of the internet and how horrible and we got to get out of right. life and stuff. But that, his success story yeah. is a, to me a real shining beacon of what can happen with the power of the- Okay. 
Right. Okay, okay. No, I, 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 I'm going to check more into him. You don't have I to. You don't no, have I do. To. I like these books. I read these books about how to persuade people yeah, and how yeah, to, yeah, all yeah. that stuff because I'm just interested in it. And it always comes down to connect with somebody. Connect. Make them make sure that you let them know that you're a likable mm. guy and you think they're a likable person and all that stuff. It's and, hard because some people, I hate to say it, yeah, are creepy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not saying Alan is. Right. Alan. Right. I'm not saying you are, but I'm just saying sometimes people are just, they don't, it's just they, they try to- they don't to, have the skill. They don't have that skill, but he that's what he's saying. He doesn't have I it. I know. So, I so don't you're, know you're telling him to do stuff he doesn't know how to do. No, he can ask questions. All right. Because okay. he's worried about being boring. Right. That was the um, the red flag. Yeah. That okay. was the flag right. that was like, oh, if he's worried about being boring, he's yeah. worried about the wrong right. thing. Great advice. Great advice. Thank you. I like it. Thank you. La don't last, be a oh, last point. The last, no, it's not a good question. We're going to go to the uh, uh, bring the joy aspect of our thing with the recommendation. A moment of joy. We take something in oh, our right. lives right, right, right. that we love that brings us joy and we tell them to whoever's watching. Well, one of them was Gary V. Okay. That was, uh, that was definitely right. a thing. The other, because you had you told me beforehand, there's a movie that I saw that it was so wonderful. Yes. Based on a best-selling book that's for girls, mm -hmm. so I never read the book. Right, but it's called "Hello God, It's Me, Margaret" or yeah, something like that's that. Right. Close. That's exactly right. But Judy Bloom. Judy Bloom. Yes. Yeah. So obviously we're dudes. We yeah. don't care about this yeah. stuff. Getting their period. Yeah. Who sure. Cares? Sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Is this? Yeah. So, uh, but I'd heard of the book. Right. And they did an adaptation of the book, a little independent film, and it is so beautiful and yeah. life affirming and again it's a, just an example of like i i'm a you know right i'm in my 60s right so like this is not i don't connect with oh i'm going to 11 year old girl waiting to get her first yeah. um yeah i'm in my 60s and i only watch 11 year old oh that's girl your stuff. thing that's all i watch comedy yeah see? that's not creepy right it's alan cool. if you're listening that's how you get that's <laughs> right. how you get friends sure. you listen to what you he listen, says and, and then, then you, you take uh, it yeah no i uh my my <laughs> men the, the 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 guy who started me in the business uh -huh. james l brooks is one of the producers oh of that movie and oh he is yes yes that's right yes did you see it yeah, i didn't see it and i talked to jim about it and he's very disappointed that it wasn't a big hit but uh, he says oh, it's really good. That's so interesting. He says it's really, really it's good. So and so it's, I'm- No, gonna, I mean, I, I, you I, can't ask him. I asked my uh, family if they wanted us to see it last night. We were all home and we wanted to see it. And uh, my family voted to, to watch something else instead, Ted Lasso. Which, yeah. Which is good. Well, fine. But we're going we're gonna to get to it. So that's my that's my recommend. It's All interesting. Right. I didn't know James L. Brooks was your mentor. Yes, yes. Yeah, he's, he's, he and Sam Simon. I mean, Sam Simon uh, and yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. What? What? Do you know something about Sam Simon? I don't. What happened? Didn't he pass away? What? Oh shit! No, of course I know he's dead. Of course he knows. This he's is what dead. we do, guys. This is, this is what we do. I, my friend, this is how we my do it. My friend Sam this wouldn't is... mind me making a joke about his death. He'd, he'd prefer it. <laughs> he'd prefer it. He'd prefer it. That's yeah, the yeah, kind of yeah, friends yes, I, have. I love. It. That was awesome. All right. That no, was awesome. Was... <laughs> All right. No, uh, that was a perfect. Yes, yeah, 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 we, yeah, we buttoned yeah. it up. Yeah, this, yeah. This should be in right now. It's fabulous. Okay, I'll stop. All right. Wayne, thank you for being here. You're welcome. And this was great. And I appreciate you. I just asked you on a strike line to just come here. And you came here just because of nothing. Out of nothing. I appreciate it. Well, it's, I I had a good time. And I, good. it was interesting. Okay. And we can talk about much deeper things later on because we have. Maybe you'll come back again and we'll talk about some other things. Well, beyond comedy. Well, all right. All right. We'll see. All right. Thank you. Later, brother. All right. Thank you for joining me uh, on Don't Be Alone with Jake Hogan. And I want you to do not be afraid to write me at uh, D D B A W Jake Hogan at gmail.com, uh, which is where you post your questions and stuff. And hopefully you'll come back next time to another great show. All right. Thanks for joining. Bye bye.